Are we going to do an intro or should I just launch into the like podcast intro? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. You're back. Welcome back. We can get started. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll just get started. We'll just. Oh my gosh. No, wait. Hold on. This is doesn't need to be the intro. I just need to tell you this. When Chris and I were doing the episode last week, and I had to read all the parts you normally read. It was so hard. I was like, this is so unfamiliar. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've heard it so many times. I had to take, I had to, like, take, like, four cuts of me saying really? the intro. Because I kept fumbling over it. I'm like, ah. But it's fine. We figured it out. We sorted it out. It was out. so cute, though. Honestly, I loved listening to it while I oh, was yay. on my hike. It was, yeah. like, it made me so happy. Sorry, you're going to have to edit that out. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Do you have COVID through the phone? Did I I give you COVID? (laughs) I swear to God, if you're a meaty virality, (laughs) it's spread through the phone. (laughs) So many people have COVID right now. It's crazy. Have you noticed this? Yes, I have noticed. It's Um, wild. A lot of it, I think, is because the kids went back to school, in my opinion. Uh, It's just everywhere. It's everywhere. It's just yeah. everywhere. It's unchecked right now. And people just aren't <laughs> testing anymore. I yeah. like I just know it. I know that people just are like, well, if I don't test, then I don't have it and I don't have to change my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, anytime I, I get everywhere. sick at this point, you might as well check just to know. You know what I mean? But, that, but... but that's what I, I thought. I think it's going so unchecked because people have stopped testing because they don't want to. Because yeah. when you test then you have to isolate and they don't want to. Yeah. But who, I guess for some people, they don't get super sick. And so then you'd be like, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Because I was like, when I had it, I don't even think that I could have gone anywhere if I wanted to. (laughs) Oh God, no. No. I was like laying in bed, surrounded by boxes of crackers and empty Gatorade bottles. (laughs) Yeah. It was a travesty. It's so (laughs) weird. Like, having no smell my taste is also so muted we were talking Mm. about this because that happened to you too where i can only taste like super salty or super sweet like i can only taste extreme flavors right now i it was one of the worst parts of it and i really was sick to my stomach eating salt for like a month afterwards it's awful wild yeah i'm i'm not like it's not that I hate salt like things don't taste salty to me it's just that that's the only thing that I can taste so it's weird because I've been drinking my coffee with sugar because I literally can't taste it unless I put sugar in it that's kind of crazy and normally I don't drink coffee with sugar but coffee is still kind of like a strong flavor too so that's still kind of it tastes like bitter water without sugar so I mean it always tastes like bitter (laughs) water that's okay that's valid (laughs) I don't know how else to describe it, though. I'm a Seattleite giving coffee it's slander, just so but that weird. feels real. That's fine. It's so <laughs> weird. It's just so weird. Well, Anyways. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're back. Glad well, I'm thanks. back. The hike was good. I finished the hike. I'm glad that I finished it before COVID got me. Okay. Well, let's right. let's uh, let's get into it. Yeah. And I'm Maddie. Welcome to Batty Breakdowns, where we hang out, have fun, and play games all the way to the end. Today, we're going to talk about our first impressions of Starfield. So it's going to be a little bit of a mix-up. We're not doing creation or critical reception. That'll come in the next um, episode. But we're just going to be talking about our first impressions and general vibes that we're getting from Starfield and because I need more time to play it, mm-hmm. I've been on vacation for the past three weeks. So as I'm coming back, I just need a little bit more time. But I have gotten a chance to get into it a little bit. And Bridget's been playing it, I think, probably a lot more than me <laughs> at this point. And um, I think together we'll have some really good stuff that we can start to talk about. And 
Yeah. So with that, let's explore the stars. That's cute. I like that one. Mm, That's a sweet one. Thank you. Yeah, let's explore the stars. And (laughs) then as a little pre-warning from the intro, you probably probably already guessed, but I did get COVID on vacation. Name a more iconic duo. Um, (laughs) And so (laughs) I have a little bit of (laughs) sore throat and maybe COVID brain. Actually, a lot of COVID brain. (laughs) I feel like I have a single brain cell. So, um, just you've been formulating sentences really well so far. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) It's really foggy up here. So, (laughs) (laughs) that's okay. (laughs) Do we still want to start off with a bit of a description on what Starfield is? Do people not know what Starfield is? Go for it. I I feel like if people do you have it pulled up because I can pull it up. Um, I have at least a thing pulled up, so yes. Okay. My answer to that is yes. Great. So Starfield is an action role-playing game developed by Bethesda Game Studios. It was, Oh, wait, no. This is bad. <laughs> I'm like, what a terrible description that I'm about to read. Uh-oh. I'm just going to tell you guys what it is. Bethesda made a new action RPG, <laughs> and the action RPG is not Skyrim, but it's kind of like Skyrim in space. No Man's Skyrim. That's my description for what Starfield is. Interesting. Okay, so on Steam, Starfield is the first new universe in 25 years from Bethesda, the award-winning creators of Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, and Fallout. That's That's literally the description? Y'all are fucking full of yourselves, honestly. That's kind of amazing. Because the thing I was... The thing I was reading was just talking about Bethesda making the game. And I'm like, that's a silly description. It must be wrong. But no, that's just what the description is. They're not even bothering to describe this game. They're just like, play this game because you liked other games that we made. I mean, to be totally fair, Bethesda RPGs are a genre by themselves. No, they're not. Yes. No. Have you played the other ones? Because we've talked about this and I know the answer. I've played Skyrim. Not a lot. Right. Not, I mean, I, I in college, <laughs> there was a period of time. I think I put sixty hours into Skyrim, okay, and I was like, "Oh that's no!" That's better than I remembered. That's this better. is gonna, this is gonna get me. So I put it down. <laughs> it's like, it's like Sims. You know what I mean? Where you're like, "Uh oh!" Like this is too like sucking in. You know what I mean? No, I just I'm wanted to lose... hear you figure out how to I'm... describe it. <laughs> I'm going to lose my life to this game. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> it was good. You don't think but the I just Bethesda don't think RPGs it's a genre. are their own genre? I don't genre? think it's a genre. No. I okay. So. I feel like they have such distinct mechanics and style at this point that if somebody Do said what... Okay, what's the... Name one. Or two. Um, they, uh, well, I mean, if we take, <laughs> God, this is harder than I thought. But I know. I know the answer. I know the answer I'm to sorry. The I'm grilling you, know, you right now. You know it when you see it. Like you have. Ugh, that's um, such a cop out. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm like wanting to go through all the weird nuanced pieces of how Bethesda RPGs work. And so you know what? I will. So generally, yeah. you're going to have some form of character creation at the beginning that is a little bit more than just um, like pick a class. Like it's not just. Okay, sorry, I'm class. feeling sassy, but like a lot of games have that. <laughs> no, but you pick all the individual stats. I do know other games have it, but you pick individual stats. Okay. And the individual stats that you pick are actually pretty impactful for pretty much the entire game usually okay and so that's like the first little piece the second one i would say is the way that they use their like looting and inventory systems have been pretty similar across all the different ones so there is like 90 percent junk about everywhere and you can always pick up all of this stupid junk and everything is based on the weight that you carry 
and half the time when you're looting you just keep running into more and more junk and theoretically sometimes you find some things that are useful but most of the time it's just garbage and then when you do okay. find useful things it's all very heavy so like that is all really consistent and then the dialogue I think has become pretty standard across most RPGs now but they do have pretty rich dialogue systems um Okay. With a lot of different options and characters that are kind of goofy. Like, they put goofy scenarios in places, I think. Okay. So that All would right. be my... I I feel like when you play it... Starfield, to me, just feels like another Bethesda RPG. Like, it just it didn't feel different to me. Okay. Okay. I will keep my eye out for those things, but I just personally don't feel like anything that you said I haven't seen in other games but it, it just feels different like okay. what other games would okay. you say compare to Bethesda RPGs I don't know what you were saying kind of reminded me of like um oh my god I'm blanking on the big game of last year that that was really hard the Dark Souls one Elden Ring oh no it's not like Elden Ring well, but but you said things that sound like Elden Ring, like the class stuff and the characters are kind of goofy. And in Elden the... Ring, okay, I didn't play Elden Ring, but I thought in Elden Ring you did actually pick a class at the beginning. You didn't pick all of your individual stat ranks in each of the different pieces. No, you don't pick the individual, but still. And then like Cyberpunk, you pick individual stuff. And that I feel has like goofy I characters. haven't played Cyberpunk either, mostly because I heard that was a shit show. So I will. I don't know. I just I I hear what you're saying. I'm not gonna disagree with you because I don't know what I'm talking about as much. But do you play sixty hours of Skyrim? I think you know what you're talking about. No, but I mean, like, as far as like from it being a genre perspective, you know. I yeah, I think that's fair. I think I um after playing fallouts and playing the elder scroll series and this one i just feel like there are little things that stand out that make it feel like bethesda mm -hmm. but this I game did have some differences for what it's worth um well do we want to just dig into our first impressions yeah yeah how are you feeling okay. Maddie? how am i feeling yeah uh, what are your well... first impressions <laughs> so um I I feel like I'm going to be the disappointment. I don't know. I'm trying not to be too, like, down on it because I also have COVID brain. I literally feel like, like I said, I feel like I have one brain cell and this game was kind of too much for me, if I'm yeah. being honest. Yeah. And my first impressions, the first thing, like, jumping into it, I was like, mining is a really interesting way to start, like, a set in space game. Like, you're yeah. underground. I was like interesting kind of good or thrilled. bad because the <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i wasn't thrilled with like i thought like i was really excited about the vibes of this game and i also yeah. stayed away from stuff about it because i wanted to be fresh going into it mm. and i i will say that i did really like the vibes of like the menu and everything like i was, I was very excited about it yeah um but then it kind of just jumps you into this, like, interesting mining scenario right off the bat that's, like, underground, not really, like, capturing my attention. And then yeah. you get this, like, cool little spacey thing because you touch a rock. <laughs> and that was cool. Um, Hearing and you then describe I thought it that... like that is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of, like, the interstellar black hole Mm, that's her yeah, yeah. thing I and i that. love interstellar so I, I was into that a little bit but it wasn't just i don't know it wasn't sucking me in like i wanted it to and then it jumps you into character creation after that which we'll talk about yeah. but yeah just kind of right off the bat like i guess i wanted it to grab me from a story perspective more than it did yeah For and that's like the first part of my first impression for what it's worth, I think you will be, I don't know, I don't know if pleasantly surprised is the word that I would use. I only played the first time I picked up Starfield for two hours, and then I put it down, because I was bored. Um, yeah. Yeah, I had almost the exact same notes from that intro scene. Um, when I thought about some of the other intros that they've had, and 
like the Skyrim one stands out, I think the most where you're on that wagon and then that giant dragon attacks and it's like chaos and everything. And you're like, Oh my God, I've been thrust into this world. And all like, you almost immediately understand the world that you're in and what you're going to be doing and the plot of the thing, right? Like that scene is a really good job. And then we have like, we just play Diablo and uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to try out Baldur's Gate yet, but you should. That intro is really, oh, really I'm good. Oh, super- I know I'm going to love it. After listening to y'all's thing, I was like, oh my God, like horny yeah, RPG. Yeah, no, it's great. I'm so into it. <laughs> yeah. And so we've had all of these like big, beautiful opening scenes that I think yeah. make a huge like cinematic impact. And this one was kind of a letdown. I was kind of bored. I'm like, I'm wandering around a mining thing, I guess. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. And I was happy that we did a little bit of a trippy space you know dream thing when you touch the artifact but i was still like it wasn't a wow as much as the other ones have been it's kind of meh i'd agree Mm -hmm. meh yeah i feel like they could have done more with that yeah very first scene it just it just and i'm and i'm worried i'm like i wonder how many people are now just never gonna pick it back up Mm, because i like almost didn't want to I don't know if I would have because it's on Game Pass, so it's effectively free for me. Yeah. We didn't have this podcast. Like, I don't think I would have continued past character creation. Genuinely don't think I would have. That, I don't feel like I was that strongly decided yet, but I've also been excited about this since I saw it at E3. You know, like I saw their Starfield, their first Starfield trailer or whatever at E3 when I went on the last E3, may it rest in peace. And I've been excited since then. So I was like, no, I'm going to keep pushing. Uh, but I didn't actually play all that long the first day because I was kind of you underwhelmed. Were like, Meh. Yeah. Yeah. I was underwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to jump into character creation? Yeah. And talk about our characters that we created? I want to yeah. hear about yours. Tell me. So um, the character creation is kind of interesting because, mm-hmm. um, well, one, Bethesda is still really terrible at hair. They really just need to get better at hair. <laughs> The one curly hairstyle is like short and ugly. I was yeah, like, what? all their hair is bad. Their hair is so bad. It's it cannot depressing. be that hard. <laughs> Apparently, it is. No, actually, after seeing some of the other games we've played, um, it shouldn't be that hard. But I was a little underwhelmed with the hair options that I had. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I thought that the the models that the characters are pretty good. Like there is a pretty good. Yeah, they were, they were really like hyper realistic. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was better than what I anticipated. And the thing that I actually enjoyed the most about it were the like background, like origin stuff that you could pick because there were so many weird, stupid things in there. And I picked all of the weird, stupid ones. So, like, of course, I picked that I have an adoring fan, which I've already run into in-game. Um, nice. But I thought it would be really, really fun to have him be bopping around. Uh, and then I picked to have my parents exist in-world, because I was like, oh, that's cool. so cute. Yeah, and I've already ran into my parents. They're just like parents that you would anticipate. They're like doting little parents. They're so excited that I've joined this like space crew. I don't know. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. It's super cute. And then I picked having a dream house because I just wanted to see what it looked like. Um, Oh my gosh. And so I have like a whole little house on a planet that's like super um, big and very fancy. It doesn't have any furniture in it, which is fine, I guess. But I picked the the background stuff that I thought would add to the game and make it a little bit silly and fun. And I've really, really enjoyed that so far. That's that's really cool. And what was your like thing that you picked, like your job or background or whatever? Um, so on this one, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to need and not need. And I can't remember Mm -hmm. the name of the one that I picked. I'll need to go look it up again because it was a while ago. Um, but I picked the ones that gave me the, the basic survival skills. So being able to like run more, having more oxygen, being able to, yeah, like I, I picked basic stuff like that. What I didn't pick, which I, it took everything that I could to not pick it were the ones that were like the criminals um, with yeah. all of this stealth stuff. Cause I almost every time play with stealth and I wanted to try and mix it up a little bit this time. Um, and Oh, I was the explorer. I think. Oh, cool. 
Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the one that I picked. Um, but I was in between that and I think it was the gangs, maybe the gangster sounded kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and then I actually considered um, the cyberneticist, I think was the other one that I considered. But all of them, I wasn't really entirely sure what I wanted to pick because I knew so little about what would actually matter in this game totally. that it made it kind yeah. of hard. To it pick. did make it hard and I didn't want to look anything up. Yeah, I did not look anything up. I was in up. the same spot as you. Yeah. Yeah. I Your little looked... traits that you picked are so cute though. I know. I uh, I think the background stuff that you get ends up being less important in this one than in other games that I've seen because it's just unlocks like the first level on a skill tree that's like pretty straightforward to unlock again later. Got so it. So okay, all that okay, okay. stuff hasn't really mattered too much except for the ones that you like immediately get. I don't know. Yeah. Less important this time than anticipated. Yeah. But the the traits that you picked were really cute. Yeah. I I did, did Cyber pick? Runner, um, which is like thief background. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like tech. It's like thief and tech. Yeah. Uh and I, I was the same as you where I'm like, I don't really know. And so I just kind of picked one. But I was also very tempted by the file not found. <laughs> Did you read that one? I read it, but I didn't know what it would do, and so I didn't pick it. It essentially just means it. It seems like it meant that your backstory was like mysterious, and you would uncover Ooh. it as you played the game. Oh, that would and be. And so I was cool. very, I was very tempted about that one, but then I was like, uh, I don't like for my first playthrough. Like, I don't know if I want to do that in case like this ends up mattering. Yeah. So I didn't do that, and then for the traits, I picked the alien DNA. Um, which has like the oxygen, like some yeah. stat boosts, the neon street rat. So I don't know when that's going to come into play, but I'm excited for that. I haven't gotten to whatever that is yet. I and haven't then... either, but I watched Chris do it already because he's played way more than me. But yeah, DK's sunk like 80 hours into it already. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, how do you play games for this long? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm the one with the video game podcast. <laughs> games for that long i do that i mean i haven't I just, played this one for that long yet i get like my eyes get physically tired <laughs> i guess the 80 hours over a period of time i think needs to be clarified 80 hours That's over true. a but week like eight hours a day <laughs> like eight hours a day it's like a lot for um me. You know that when we normally play this podcast, you'll be like, Bridget, I'm 50% of the way through. And I'll be like, I haven't yes, started I know. yet. <laughs> and then the next day I'll be like, I'm done. And you're like, what the I fuck? Know. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, you're like, your uh, dredge one really just blew me out of the water. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Amazing. Incredible. And then the last one I picked was Empath. So... Um, and that's where you and, get like boosts if you do thing like oh. if you do something that your crew likes you, like you get like an extra boost or something I don't know yeah. so I just randomly picked some stuff I was trying to go for like a techie street rat background we'll see that's cute I don't know I yeah. didn't pick any of the traits that I felt like would like, I didn't pick any of the really impactful traits that would change the way that gameplay was, because I wasn't sure if there would end up being, like, a downside that it turns mm -hmm. out I was upset about. And so that's why I ended up picking all of the I like what like, you picked. weird ones, because I was like, no, I thought I like it would it. add. And, mm -hmm. yeah. I think my that's favorite one cute. so far has been the kid stuff one with the parents. Like, it's Yeah, that's so really adorable. cute. It's cute. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cute. The adoring fan is kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also kind of nice because you'll just be like sitting there and you'll dock at a place and the adoring fan will be like, like you're definitely going on to like a hostel. You're like on, on boarding a hostel ship and he'll be like, I'm sure they'll be so excited to see you. Who wouldn't be? <laughs> like, thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Incredible. So why don't we do like a little recap of the intro and like the story? Do you want to okay. do that? Sure. Yeah. So uh, the kind of TLDR of the story of Starfield 
is after you are a part of this mining crew and find this strange artifact that makes you go all psychedelic weird for a second, you have to hand this off to this mysterious person like the mining people this is a job that they took on right and so Mm -hmm. you have found this piece you were completely knocked out you lost all of your memories pretty much for a short period of time and then you wake back up and have to go meet this guy to do this handoff but when you do go meet the guy to do the handoff you're still on the same planet you're still chilling Mm -hmm. around the mining people you are attacked by question mark question mark question mark and you need to fend them off and also get this artifact you know to a safe safe place where it's supposed to be and it turns out that as you flee you are still being followed so the person who wanted the artifact he decides to stay behind and make amends for the fact that like a ton of the mining crew got destroyed by these people (laughs) murdered yeah i i was so confused about how that was like the solution to that problem like it didn't make sense (laughs) it made no sense it's like yeah you're gonna stay here and make amends and i'm like by doing what like cleaning up the dead bodies (laughs) very who knows but anyway you end up with a ship by yourself with like a robot you immediately become a captain yeah immediately on the ship that for some reason this other guy was just like yeah take my ship it was very yeah he's like you can have it (laughs) whatever yeah like i'll stay over here and clean up bodies to like make amends like nobody would do that (laughs) but you get a ship and you get this robot sidekick and you head out into space and here's the uh, first place where, like, I made it through to New Atlantis for my first playthrough, but the first time you run into space, you get, like, into another battle a little bit, and you end up having to go attack them. We'll talk about that in a second. But I want to talk about my first impressions of space, which was, I was a little disappointed. Mm. Because as someone who has sunk in probably around 70 or 80 hours into No Man's Sky, maybe longer, ooh, I was a little, like, I knew that there were going to be limitations because you can't really make a game like No Man's Sky and then have all of the RPG elements on top of it. Like, you just Mm -hmm. really can't do that. And I had heard beforehand about not being able to like land in planets and having like Mm -hmm. those invisible barriers, which so far I haven't run into. It's been fine. But when I got into space, it felt a lot less like, wow, than it did when I was in space with no man's sky, because this is my hypothesis. I don't think that they did the right, like camera parallax movement when you're in space interesting like the stars don't move very much which you wouldn't expect they're so far away but the planets don't really move like it feels like i'm just sitting there flying in a simulator but nothing yeah exactly nothing's moving around me absolutely nothing yes yes i felt the exact same way and i even thought it was like i thought i was doing something wrong and i like called to dk i was like hey i feel like i'm not moving like yeah how do i move in this game and he's like oh yeah it's just really slow like you have to just fast travel yeah and then he was showing me like the fast travel stuff yeah but i felt the same way and uh, at the end of the day what i ended up trying to do is after you get out into space and then get attacked the robot dude is like hey we're gonna have to kill all these people if we're going to continue on and he gives you a little marker to a planet that's nearby to go attack yeah yeah yeah. and so Mm -hmm. i was like i'm gonna fly to the planet because i can see it it's right there so i aimed my little ship towards it and i'm just bebopping my way over there i probably did that for about 15 minutes before i realized that you just can't do that like you just don't keep getting closer like at some point it just stops you so the space that you're flying around in is really only the immediate space that's like around the planet. Yep. And I was pretty miffed about that just because, I mean, I get Mm -hmm. that I don't want to do that every time. Like I am not going to sit there and fly 30 minutes to the next planet, but I thought at least I'd keep getting closer and eventually give up and fast travel. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) No, I, I agree. I felt the same way. I also, while we're talking about the flying, I thought the ship flying tutorial was so bad. 
Oh, yes. Oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. It was so bad. And I know that I, like, my brain's not at 100%, but I was like, am I fucking stupid? Because what is this? They're like, oh, yeah, just just adjust your your power up your stuff. And, like, with what? What do you mean? I don't even – there's, like, so much stuff around. There's a lot of stuff. There's, like, a lot of stuff to pay attention to. And they're like, yeah, just power it up. And it's like, power up what? Like, power what up? Like, what button? It didn't highlight anything when it was talking about it at all. Like, you completely have to just, like – push buttons and see what happens yeah and that was quite frustrating to me i was like this and then once you kind of understand it because you're pushing buttons and seeing like what happens it's not bad but it's just like why was the tutorial that trash yeah there was no reason for it to be so bad and their uis i think in this game so far have been really slick like really pretty but very yes. hard to read. Yes. <laughs> like, very hard to read. I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at. There's, I'm still pretty early in the game, and Chris has played a lot more than me. And there was a time literally today where I pulled up a menu, and I'm like, Chris, can you explain to me what these symbols mean over here? Yeah. Because I just don't know. <laughs> well, it's just, it's hard to, and it's, it's, it's frustrating when a game does that, because it's like, I know that you have... Playtesters. resources they know. yeah i i know that it's not i don't know it just feels like such an easy thing to fix to like put a fucking highlight over something when you're talking about it for yeah. the first time yeah i don't know i no, i agree with you and it took me a really long time to figure out um how to or that when you like speed up because i know that it's because i'm flying a ship in space okay i get it but like I thought I needed to aim in a certain direction. And so I kept messing up with like moving the speed around as I was just attempting to point myself in the correct orientation. Because yes. yeah. it's the same stick that you usually do for orientation is also speed, which didn't really click with me immediately. You know? Yeah. So it it was like it's good and to your point, and I wrote this, like everything looks oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Everything looks so good, but then it's like, but then you're not matching it with it's not intuitive gameplay and intuitiveness that you would expect to go along with it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So continuing on, I guess, in the story, you go to a different planet, you continue to shoot these people that are after you, and it turns out that they're literally only after you because of the ship that you are now in that that other dude gave you. Because it thinks you have loot. Yeah, it thinks you have loot. I managed to persuade the people to just be like... I intimidated them. Oh, you intimidated them? No, I was just like, please, no, I have nothing in my ship. I'm new. I'm but a poor miner. I said, you know who you're messing with? And they were like, who are you? And I was like, you don't want to (laughs) know. Try to play into my street rat. Yeah, I like that. That's good. (laughs) I was just a poor miner with a family. (laughs) No, it's just, it's just the measly (laughs) resources. Please. I've done nothing so far. I've only pilfered for some cups and some trash. (laughs) that's funny yeah Yeah. but i did manage to persuade them and then get out of there it was um for me i think a thing that didn't need to exist like i wish i wouldn't have had to do that before i went to new atlantis oh i see what you're saying yeah i see what you're saying like it didn't add anything to the story yeah it It was it was actually it it felt more like a tutorial it was a tutorial yes yeah i i agree with you it was a tutorial for like how to do stuff and i get wanting to do that but i don't remember their other games having it so i don't want to say forced because maybe i could have done something else and ignored it but it felt way more on rails i feel like than the other games that they've done oh it was totally forced yeah I don't think you had any other options. Okay. I didn't try, but... I didn't I either, felt... but I don't see how it would have. Because at that point, like, you had to go to that planet. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Yeah. But I was a little like, they're not going to stop that. shooting you mm-hmm. unless you go to that planet. Yeah. I was, however, after you kill all of them and make your way to New Atlantis, pretty impressed by New Atlantis, which I thought was very cool. 
New Atlantis was very cool. Tell us about New Atlantis, Maddie. Yeah, so New Atlantis is the first city planet situation that you go to, and that's where you're delivering this rock, this, like, cool rock that you found. I guess they're calling it an artifact. <laughs> No, he's um, <laughs> calling it a rock, man. <laughs> it's a cool rock. It doesn't rock. even look like a rock. It looks like a piece of like a, a ship. It looks like metal. I don't know when you had it was in the rock. It was it looked in the like rock. a rock. That's it doesn't look like <laughs> it looks like a rock. It looks like a like a special rock. Anyways, <laughs> so you're delivering this artifact to people that the character Barrett, who you left to make amends. <laughs> Which like cracks cleaning me up, up. The bodies. Stupid. So you are delivering it to his organization, Constellation or something. Right. On New Atlantis. And you land at New Atlantis and it does feel like a very full, rich city, which I really liked. Yeah. I think that it's what I want from a game that tells me I'm going to go to a big city. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You hear conversations that people are having. It is, like, actually busy. It's actually, like, full of NPCs, not just, you know, one or two here or there and, like, repeating dialogue. You know, yeah. it, it actually felt, like, alive, which was really cool. And then I did appreciate the public transit um, and just the design of it. It just – it felt it felt good. It felt unique. Mm -hmm. I really yeah. liked the, and they have this in other games too, and other games have done this, but I do really love when you can eavesdrop on conversations and get quests that just pop up from them. Yeah. It makes it feel really engaging to me, and it makes yes. me want to explore more, because I want to sit there and eavesdrop on this conversation to see, and I want to talk to them once the conversation ends to see if I can get something out of it, you know? Yeah. And I ended up meeting this... A janitor at the train station and had to go get her a cup of coffee because she's super tired <laughs> and I was like yeah I'll go get oh, you a cup so of coffee oh that's so nice <laughs> oh I didn't read I, I didn't get that one. Oh, cool yeah so it's, like, it, it did feel a, very lively yeah. yeah it was yeah, lively yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah and so then once you go to the constellation like office or whatever mm -hmm. it's essentially a conversation with them and then you join the organization right yep and then the whole goal is um, you're trying to find the other artifacts, essentially. Yep. And that's kind of kicking off the story of mm -hmm. Starfield. Yeah. And that's where I left off. Yeah. I've done a little bit past that. I haven't played as much as I anticipated playing because – and. Maybe this is kind of similar to how you were feeling, but I was just in a yeah. different headspace. Like, I've been pretty stressed lately, just in general, with lots of stuff to do. And Starfield so far has felt like a game that I really have to engage with. And yeah. I have to be proactive about. Like, I yeah. have to go explore and figure out what I want to do and where I want to go and what, you know. And I need to engage when there is dialogue and I need to listen. And I... It felt like a lot of brain power that needs mm -hmm. to be put towards engaging yes. with the game, which which isn't a bad thing. It's just no, 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 no. Your brain isn't up to it, you know. Yeah. And I was just really tired and stressed this last week, and every single time I picked it up, I was like, "This is more than what I can do right now." And so I think I probably also, only friend, played. I'm sorry that you're oh. tired and stressed. No, it's okay. I think I've been. Um, I've been eating a little bit less, trying to make sure I can fit in my wedding dress. And so I've been cranky and then um, doing all of, we've been doing chimney estimates for our house for literally like decades. And so I just, every single time I sat down in front of this TV, I was like, I just don't have the energy and effort. So I have yeah. been playing games all week. I just haven't been playing this game because it's just a lot to engage with it. And so I think I've only put in, probably 13 or 14 hours which is way less than what I anticipated to have played by now because it's already been a couple weeks I think yeah yeah um, uh yeah. yeah it came out 10 days ago yeah 10 days and yeah. so I you know and I guess 13 14 hours in 10 days isn't like super super small no, no, no. but I think the way that I normally play as alluded to earlier is I tend to kind of obsess for a very short period of time over a game yeah 
And I don't normally play a lot of games over maybe like 80 hours. Usually yeah. about that point, I hit my limit. But I will hit that 80 hours in a very short period of time. And then I will never play it again. Um, unless it's Star or Stardew Valley. In which case, I will hit my like 300th hour and keep going. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But for this one in particular, I'm going to play it more, especially as we want to get more into the nuances of the game and and dig in more past the actual like main storyline and all that stuff. But I, it's been a lot to engage with, I think, for me this week. You know? Yep. It'll look up for us. Yeah. But what I we'll... will say is Chris has been really, really enjoying it. So I think I just need to get into DK it has more. been too. DK has yeah. been too. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, will look forward to our next episode and we can dive into some of the reviews and feedback that other people have given in as well, because I've seen interesting things floating around already just from chilling in the subreddit. Um, so I don't know. It'd be good. I think it's really interesting. I mean, yeah, we'll talk about it, but I I have also been already, because after I played it, I was like, oh, what do other people think about this? Like, am I crazy mm-hmm. that I'm like not loving it and I wanted to? Mm -hmm. Um, and that seems to be a shared sentiment of not that the game is bad. It's not bad by any means. I think it was just slow expectations versus reality. And then I think coming off of something like Baldur's Gate, (laughs) which (laughs) Ah, felt like (laughs) super kind of, it, it was like the opposite thing happened where not that people weren't excited for Baldur's Gate but it didn't have the hype around it like Starfield has and then the fact that it's just blown everyone away and how it's so rich and like so characterful I think that this just feels a little soulless in comparison No, entirely. And that's actually one of the things I have. I've been actually putting up my group chat at work, like all the last couple of weeks, where I was like, Baldur's Gate blew me away. I had played a little bit of it at PAX previously, but I didn't play any of the early access. And I was just absolutely blown away by how amazing it was. And I have found myself this last week wanting to play Baldur's Gate instead of continuing to pick up and play Starfield, which has been internally very stressful to me because I am the world's biggest Bethesda fangirl. So to have them come out so close together, I think actually did really hurt Starfield for me because I have like the thing that I get out of those are being able to do whatever you want, being able to explore, being able to like do these fun side quests. And I get all of that from Baldur's Gate and the writing so far has been better. So I, it, it's, it's been really conflicty <laughs> for me and I entirely blame Baldur's Gate for being so good. Um, but I will also say that I actually think that Starfield met the expectations that I had so far. Like it plays like what I anticipated. It was a little oh, slower good. at the beginning. Um, good. And good. It, but it meets my expectations for what I had wanted out of the game for the most part. I just think, like you were saying, Baldur's Gate just blew me out of water. And it's a little bit of like I had huge expectations for this game in general. And I think they would have been met if I hadn't had played Baldur's Gate, which is a little sad, but... Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad thing to have a game like Baldur's Gate come. I mean, right? Like, it's it's only good things. It's just like, well, that's yeah. just how it is. It's just how it is. Yeah, you're totally right. I'm hoping that as I get deeper and deeper into Starfield that it opens up a little bit for me more and I know better how to, like, engage with it and it becomes easier and less uh effort i think as we get into it but we'll find out i did hear for some people that for them that was at like hour 40 so i've got i've got some time to go <laughs> yeah i mean i yeah yeah well, maybe That's by the time we get to our episode next week i'll have hit around then and we can talk about how like how deep the game goes we'll see yeah for what it's worth with absolutely no spoilers uh, because I haven't played it myself, your neon street rat trait, I think, will be fun. A fun one. Oh, yay. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I, I'm excited to keep playing it when my brain recovers a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah. Do we want to do a little on topic about the other games that we're playing right now? Because you said you were playing some other games. I am playing other games. Okay. Well, on topic. On topic. Um, My other games are not that exciting. I have been playing to try and finish Cult of the Lamb. That's what I've been doing. Oh. Why? I... Well, so when I first played Cult of the Lamb, I really enjoyed it, but I only ever beat two of the four main bosses that you're supposed to beat, and then I had put it down for a really long time for reasons I can't remember, and then I, for some reason, I think it was because they had a new update kind of recently, I reinstalled it and started oh, playing cool. it again, and I have now, like, I started from scratch because I couldn't remember at all what I was doing in the game. But I have now beat three of the four bosses. I'm hoping to make it to the fourth one. Nice. We'll see how it goes. But I've been playing a lot of that. I've been playing some Sims again. That's right. I also reinstalled the Sims, um, which is a little ridiculous. Although I never make it very far. I always do character creation and then I build my house and then I start over. I mean, Um, that's kind of the most fun parts of Sims, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, But that's mostly what I've been doing lately. Um, And I've played a couple of indie games. Like, I played the Big Con, which was really, really good. And I actually met the the people who make Big Con at PAX, um, which for folks who don't know... Oh, did you go to PAX? Yeah, yeah. I went to PAX this year. It's a Yeah. When was that? Um, it was while you were gone. It was uh, Labor Day weekend. Oh, just yeah. for fun? Um, Chris and his brother go every year, and I tag along with them. How but fun. No, it's really Cute. cool. Yeah, and if people haven't actually been, PAX is held in Seattle every year, and it's this big like video game and tabletop game convention. And so cool. there's like a whole... Have you? Been I mean, I know what many? PAX is, but I mean, okay, like, yeah. it's cool that you went. Yeah, it was really fun this year. I it was starting to get like the uh, what what's the word like the attendance back up from COVID because last year I went and it was a little low lower key than it was this year. This year it seemed okay. to be ramping up again, which is nice. And uh, I actually met the people who made the big con and I went up to them and I was like, I just want to tell you that I really liked your game and I finished it. I really enjoyed it. It was really cool. And they're like, oh, thank you. It was so cute. It's just, you know, you don't get to meet the devs very often. So it was was fun to actually see them and say hi. And hustle your way across 90s America as a runaway teen con artist. That sounds so cute. Yeah. The art style was really fun too. I really enjoyed it. And the big con you can finish like in a night and not even a binge night. It was like three or four hours. Like it was really fast. Oh, oh, I love short games. Yeah, you should play that while you're trying to rebrain. It was really cute. I liked it. Yeah, cute. What are you playing, Maddie? Or are you playing nothing? I no, (laughs) I'm playing. (laughs) No, like I said, I've been playing Fortnite. (laughs) Oh right. (laughs) So that is my like biggest brain empty like game to play. Um. I've just been listening to podcasts and playing Fortnite primarily, but when I'm bored with Fortnite, I will play, um, I just picked up Monster Train. Have you, it's on Game Pass. I have heard of it. I feel like people at work have talked about that one before, but I don't know what it is. So I'm a big Slay the Spire fan, but I have beat it with Mm -hmm. all of the characters so i've heard i've been hearing and i've been getting recommended monster train if i liked slay the spire because it's pretty similar it's like a deck building roguelike situation and it is and i like it (laughs) 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 so i've also been um because it's like you need like one brain cell for it. You don't need Perfect. a ton. You don't need, <laughs> it's not like a no brain cells, but it's like a one brain cell. Yeah. And I can still listen to podcasts because I've just been listening to just funny podcasts um, and, you know, playing just to get me through the day <laughs> um, of being really sick and not doing anything else. Um, so yeah, I've been really enjoying Monster Train and I would recommend. Good. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me that you were playing Monster Prom. 
No, but I should. I haven't been doing laptop gaming. I've been on mm. my downstairs TV. Gotcha. I've been couching yeah. it. I've been thinking about picking up Monster Prom, if only because I am currently working on my own dating sim. And what I. What dating sim? I, I feel like every time I talk to you, you're working on a different game. This is the same one from the last time I talked oh. to you. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I have written an entire plot outline, and I have Cute. all of my, like... Is this the one that Chris is also helping with? Um, Chris isn't really helping with this one um, very much. This is the one that I wrote, like, a quick draft when I was in Hawaii for my friend's wedding, and I was, like, super drunk on alcohol slushies. And I was like, this would be the best idea in the history of the world. And then I actually, like, came back home and decided I was going to figure out how to make it work. Cute. So I have rewritten it, like, three or four times. And I finally found a plot that I'm like, ooh, this is really good. Oh, cute. And okay, when we're off the podcast, we'll talk about it. because I don't. Yeah, we can talk about spill. it more because I don't want to spoil it. Because yeah, I yeah. actually think I have – no, even saying that is going to spoil it. I think – it will be good. The thing that I've been, uh, the reason that I've picked up The Sims again lately is because I've been building the layout of the the like video game inside of The Sims so that I can get an idea of how I want like the backgrounds to look like without Cute. having to do 3D modeling myself. And so I've been doing that to get like an idea of like shapes and where I would want to put things and how that would look and like what the right angle would be. Don't use Unity. Oh, no, not using Unity. That has been such a catastrophe. How's like I'm I'm so curious to go back to work and see if anyone's talking about it. Um so I feel like Uh, If you guys haven't heard, Unity is now going to be charging per install for everyone that uses Unity. And I think your game has to make something like over $200,000. I can't remember what the barrier is. Yeah, but that's Um, not that much. It's not that much. And it's absolutely wild. I, I feel like I have things to say. Maybe we shouldn't say this on the podcast, but there are definite interesting aspects of technically interesting aspects of the thing they are attempting to pitch, like knowing what how you can track installs like individually how you can ignore the pirating installs that just seem like pretty impossible problems to solve based on what i've seen i absolutely have no idea how they're going to do it i am interested to see how it lands and all i know is as a person who i mean likes it's to not landing games, well i will never use unity again like literally never so it's really wild i i'm i yeah. really hope I hope it doesn't work out because it's just such a gameable system too. Like, can you imagine like instead of review bombing, install bombing? Yeah, exactly. And you could set up like a VMs. Uh, VM. Yeah, exactly. And then on like a little schedule, make a new VM, install the game, delete it, delete VM, make new VM, just like over and over, and yeah. over again. And you could put them out of business, like out of business. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you look at the pricing and the way that it scales per, like, size of company, it really only fucks over, like, that exactly sweet spot of, like, the smaller indie devs. So not, like, the really tiny ones that might not ever actually, like, ship a thing or hit that 200000 But, like, the smaller ones, like, Cult of the Lamb um, is one of the, like, prime, like, sitting in that area um, that I've seen. And they've threatened to take their game off of the store um, as soon as this stuff rolls out. But man, it's like crazy. And people have been talking about it um, being a play for them to force free to play games into their ads system. So that's what I've seen a lot of. Ads? So they, Unity has their own ads. And of course, they're going to get a cut of it if you use their ads. So they would make money. Like in game ads? In game ads for like free to play games and things like that. And free to play games would be like the number one people who'd be impacted by this because every un- install doesn't guarantee them money. And no. And so if you move over to their ads platform, then theoretically, I think they subsidize some of the install fees or something like that. I I might have those facts wrong, but my understanding was if you use their ads platform, a part of that install fee is subsidized 
And so it would be much more affordable for free to play to keep being free to play on Unity if they were to use Unity ads and give them money through that avenue instead. Fascinating. Which to me does sound interesting as like a business model, but also catastrophic. Isn't Genshin Impact on Unity? Because if it is, I uninstall and reinstall that game at least once a month. (laughs) Because I play it and then I don't get a character I want and then I uninstall it and then I reinstall it. And uh, I probably would owe that company like at least 30 bucks by now with how many times I've uninstalled and reinstalled. It's fine. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, Genshin Impact is on Unity. Yeah. It was like, oh, and uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley is on Unity. So they're messing with the freaking mouse, which is crazy. Um... And then there were a couple other bigger games too. I can't remember, but I just can't see this working out for them. I I, I don't know. I I absolutely have no idea how that's gonna work. They're just like driving people to Unreal Engine. Yeah, that's, or Godot. Like, Godot's like the other option. Oh, the is that like the open source one? It's the open source one. The real problem with Unreal is that it's not built very well for two D. Um, and Chris and I got a 2D game working inside of Unreal, but you definitely have to fight against it rather than it working for oh, you. Oh, interesting. And okay, Godot okay. can do the 2D from what I hear pretty well. And it's open source, so you don't have to deal with all the financial shenanigans. Oh, like Gal Godot. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry, hope I'm saying I, it's that like right. spelled exactly like her last name. No, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Or Godot. Godot sounds imagine. so much less cool than Godot does. <laughs> so, yeah. I refuse to call it Godot. Sorry. Godot. <laughs> I bet they're having a good day. Yeah. I was wondering if now would be like the opportunity to start building plugins um, for things like Godot because if people migrate over to places like that. Because I just really don't, I don't see how anyone sticks with Unity unless you are some super big corporation that can just eat it because the the percent is so much smaller when you're a really large corporation. Well, the thing is, is just I just don't see how that even for big corporations, it's like, oh, that's a lot. Like per install is a mm-hmm. lot. Well, and like, how are they even going to track installs? Like, please, somebody tell me how they're going to accurately track installs. Because if they actually knew, like when you were pirating a copy then why don't they just not let you play pirated copies? Like, obviously, they don't know when a game is pirated. So, like, obviously, those installs are all going to count. It's just wild. Absolutely wild. Are you yeah, reading that's... facts about it? Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> now reading an article about it. I spent, like, two days reading a ton of stuff about it because... It is so spicy. I love when companies make strategic decisions so that I can sit here and analyze and try to figure out why. Because usually you could make your way down to like the thread of what was the seed of the idea that they were thinking this would be good for. And I really think it's the ads thing. That's what I've decided it is, is the reasoning, is to get the free to play people to move over to their ads platform. Everyone is obsessed with ads these days. It's I know. wild. I hate ads. It's, so, it's, like, it's also like everyone has so many ad blockers. They're, uh, whatever. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I hate ads. God. I hate my existence. God, nobody likes them. Companies are obsessed with them. Uh, I don't get it. Because it makes money. It's all about money. It's money. Anyways. What is wild to me is that uh, you think about let's reverse time by like 10 years or longer, 13 years. And then you have like Netflix pop up with no ads. And everyone is like, this is the best thing in the history of the world. Of course, I will pay you money to not have ads. And then we've seen things devolve to, like, you're going to get ads anyway, though. Sorry. (laughs) Now you have to pay for the no ads tier, which I do for Hulu. I do for Hulu. Yeah. But Hulu is better than Netflix. You heard it here, folks. Hulu is my most used one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's better. Although I'm still sad that I don't have Netflix, except for on my phone. (laughs) It's, my phone. <laughs> it's been it's been tough without netflix <laughs> while having covid 
You don't get the new Black Mirror. Sad. I want to catch up on my K dramas. Does nobody else have? There's isn't there like Crunchyroll for for that or does Crunchyroll? No, Crunchyroll's anime. Oh, it's anime. Okay. Yeah, which I did catch up on. Did you watch One Piece? No, but I want to watch the Netflix One Piece. That's a yes. I watched Netflix's One Piece. I have not watched the actual One Piece anime or read the manga. The One Piece anime, I believe, is like a thousand episodes. The Chris said that the One Piece has been going on since what, like the nineties or something <clears throat> crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I do want to watch the live action. Is it good? It is so good. It's so Ugh, good. I know it's good. Ugh. It took me it took me like three episodes to admit in front of Chris that I like this thing that originated as manga. Because <laughs> he was like he was like, Welcome, Tell me you like Bridget. it. He's like, Welcome, Tell me you like Bridget. It. But Okay, it wait, was, can I recommend an anime for you? I cannot promise you that I'd like it. It's on it. Hulu. I cannot promise you anything. I can make I know, but promises. will you watch like an episode? I will consider watching it watching an episode. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Buffy. I've dropped off Buffy. Oh, you have. I've made it to like mid season three of Buffy. It's still pretty good. It's my put it in the on in the background show now. Well, so it's a it's yeah. Well, we save that for another time because we're already at like that's okay. Our short episode is like an hour, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, we can cut out a lot the, of the off topic. It's fine. The the anime that I will recommend is called Spy Family. It's I've on, heard of that one. I have heard it's of that on one. Hulu. It is. I like it a lot. You should watch it. I've recently been. I downloaded it all for the plane, and I really liked it. Um, so I consider watching it. Have, and it has a dub. It has a dub. I don't really so like dubs as much usually, unless they are actually good. I guess no. The dub usually is they good. Have, usually they have worse like voice acting. Oh God. I just disagree. <laughs> I, I will say that that's from the context of watching live action film that is dubbed over, oh, not not oh, cartoons. I've never actually oh, watched. Yeah, oh, okay. I have never dubbed seen an anime, anime. Is good. Yes, I've never seen a dubbed anime. I was talking specifically with like dubbed live action, which is normally yes. what I watch. Yeah, and I agree, dub is worse in yes. that case. Yeah, because they just never they never have the right emotion that lines up with a face. It, it it's too distracting. It doesn't yeah. match. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I I will consider. I hear your it. little dogs. Oh no. Well, good. We can cut off this. Po- Why are? Please they watch. Dancing? Just just watch it. It's so good. For it. It's so good. Just watch it. <laughs> watch it. I hey, guess. My little- oh. Hey, okay. I will watch one episode. <laughs> one. Okay. I will watch and it's one. It's okay if you don't like it. Okay. I it's did start. Little. I started Succession, and I hated it. <gasps> I will not watch it. <laughs> but I did try. <laughs> but I told you you have to power through. <laughs> did I not tell you you have to power through the first couple episodes because they're such bad people? I totally get it. It's really hard to get over. <laughs> I acknowledge and understand it was awful. <laughs> okay. 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 And there are Fine, so many other good things to watch that I just can't okay. get through. All right. Give me an episode of Spy Family. Tell me what you think. Okay. I will watch one episode of Spy Family. And then in exchange, I will find an episode of Sister Wives for you. <gasps> no. <laughs> I just made a deal with the devil. <laughs> oh, God. You don't have to watch Sister Wives. <laughs> I, if you give me one episode to watch, I will watch the one episode. Oh my gosh. Okay. If well, it's on, the if it's one. on HBO Max. It is. Yeah. That's right. I All hope right. you're excited. I've made the exchange. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you watch the most dramatic episodes so that you're like, I have to see what happens before and after. That's what I'll do. I did watch this, um clip of the guy i think it must be a recent one where he was like i feel in my heart that i want the space to hate her <laughs> it's like the most christian way of saying i hate her fucking gut i, know. I the, the quote that clip just baffled me 
I, the quotability yeah. of the show is beyond. It's like at some point he <clears throat> starts sh- like yelling about it being like a knife to his kidneys. And he was like, the sacrifices I have made to love you. Wasted. <laughs> and it's just, I say it all the time now. I'm just like, wasted. Wasted. <laughs> Such a hoot. Maybe that's the episode that I'll let you. It'll be very dramatic. Um, okay, you're yeah. right. Our short, our short episode is long, um, but it was nice to catch up. You were gone yeah. for a long time. I missed you, Maddie. I know. I missed you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and rate it. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Batty Breakdowns and visit our website, BattyBreakdowns.com, made by Bridget. The podcast art was done by Tanisha Vernicar, and the podcast was edited by me, Maddie Wisnat. Join us next time to hear us two baddies break down Starfield some more. Part two. <laughs> some more. Yay. <laughs> some more. <laughs> All right. You know, bye, everyone. The actual game starts. <laughs> <laughs>